There's no hard and fast rule when it comes to deciding what does or doesn't make for an incredible archaeological find. It's not for us to decide what's amazing, it's for you. All we can do is make videos full of incredible archaeological discoveries like this one, and you can use the comments section to tell us which of them you found the most amazing. Here comes our latest collection. If you dug into the ground beneath your basement and found a stash of beer perfectly preserved inside unopened bottles, you might be tempted to drink it. But you'd be best advised not to sample the beer cache that was found at the site of the old Scarborough Castle Inn in Leeds, England in March 2020. The beer was bottled and stored in the 19th century, and so it would have gone off many years ago. And even if it hadn't, it would still be poisonous. Mystifyingly, as well as being around 3% alcohol by volume, the beer is also 0.15% lead. Over 300 bottles were found at the site, all brewed by a long-forgotten company called J.E. Richardson. It's doubtful that a brewery would want to deliberately poison its customers, but the lead percentage of these beers is high enough to cause internal organs to fail. Experts are baffled as to how the lead could have got into the mixture. The bottles were undisturbed, so they weren't added at a later date. One possible explanation is that the water used during the brewing process came from lead pipes. This practice was outlawed in the early 1900s. We now travel from England to Israel, where a 2,000-year-old bronze ring, featuring a stunning solitaire gemstone, was found in what's thought to be an ancient ritual bath in the city of David in December 2018. A ring like this would be as valuable 2,000 years ago as it is today, so it's unlikely that whoever left it behind did so deliberately. It's more likely that they mistakenly left the ring behind after entering the bath for ritual purification. It would have been an expensive loss for them, and it's a wonder that nobody else came along and claimed it as their own after it was left behind. The mikvah would have been positioned on the ancient pilgrimage road, and would have been a Jewish penitent's last chance to stop and purify themselves before attempting to complete the 2,000-foot climb to Temple Mount. It would have been a very busy route, which makes it all the stranger that nobody saw it and picked it up. Maybe it slipped into a crack beneath the bath, or maybe the people of the time had excellent manners. News that archaeologists in Israel might have found the fabled lost tomb of the Maccabees was first announced in 2015. That's seven years ago now, and experts are still debating whether the tomb they found that day was the real Maccabees tomb or not. What can be said for certain is the structure the archaeologists found is ancient and is a dead ringer for contemporary descriptions of a tomb built for Jewish rebels who seized control of Judea from the Seleucids 2,200 years ago. The telltale sign that the experts may have found the tomb after more than a century of searching for it is the presence of a Byzantine cross. This is the only instance of a mosaic of the cross being used to decorate the floor of a burial vault and marks the tomb out as being significant. That isn't a smoking gun by any means, so until some more solid evidence is found, debate among historians about this ancient tomb will continue. It's now one of three different sites in the region that are all claimed as the true tomb. Different cultures and civilizations of the ancient world have had different burial rites and ceremonies. The ancient Celtic warriors of Britain and Europe, for example, could expect to be buried in a mound. If you were an Egyptian pharaoh, you could look forward to being entombed in a pyramid. The ancient Chinese weren't thought to be big believers in pyramid tombs, but all that changed thanks to a discovery in 2017 in Zhangshu, in the country's Henan province. Archaeologists working there found a pair of tombs buried below the city, one of which is cylindrical and the other a pyramid. Both of them appear to date back to the Han Dynasty of 1,800 years ago which many experts feel was the golden age of ancient China. The pyramid doesn't compare in any way to the scope and scale of the Egyptian pyramids. This Chinese example is a mere six feet tall. What's yet to be explained is why this is the only pyramid-shaped tomb ever found in China, and who the occupant was when they were alive. More to the point, 
Why were so many of our ancient ancestors so obsessed with pyramids? While we're talking about discoveries from China, let's take a moment to examine a recreation of some ancient wall paintings that were found in a mysterious tomb in Shangqi. The exhibition went on display to the public with the catchy title Ancient Wall Paintings from the Shanqi Museum for the first time in late 2017. It contains recreations of a whole 89 wall paintings created from the Northern Dynasty's era to the Yuan Dynasty era, an enormous span of time that begins in the 4th century and ends in the 14th. The star of the show is a massive 1,500-year-old fresco that's over 10 feet long and 12 feet tall. It's part of a giant colorful mural full of hunting scenes, showing ancient people in pursuit of deer, goats, bears, and even tigers. The paintings, even the older ones, display a remarkably high level of artistic skill and may have been an attempt by these ancient people to record elements of their culture or their shared story. Most of the artworks that make up the collection come from the Xu Quanlang tomb, which is considered to be one of the most significant Northern Dynasties era tombs ever found by archaeologists. Trying to identify the world's oldest city is a redundant exercise because it depends on your definition of the word city. But we can all agree that the Turkish site of Kadahoyuk is one of the oldest and most significant population centers on the planet, with a history that stretches back 9,000 years. The whole area is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but in March 2022, archaeologists working in Katahoyuk found out something new about how the earliest inhabitants of the proto-city buried their dead. To be more specific, they stored them until they decomposed to nothing more than skeletons, painted their bones with red ochre, and then buried them beneath their houses. From time to time, they would then dig them up, pass the bones around, and then repaint and rebury them. In some cases, blue cinnabar was used on the bones rather than red ochre, although this shade appears to have been reserved for the bones of men. Historians believe that this unusual sounding practice is related to a Neolithic ancestor worship ritual, but the precise nature of that ritual and the reasoning behind it are secrets that have been lost to time. Our next amazing discovery takes us to the United States of America, where a wooden hunting bow was found in an Alaskan lake in March 2022. The bow is a little over 50 inches long and is in remarkably good condition for an artifact that's been underwater for more than 500 years. The bow was retrieved from Lake Clark National Park and Preserve in the southwest of Alaska by park rangers before being sent to scientists in Anchorage for further analysis. It's the first hunting bow from this era to be found within several hundred miles of Lake Clark. The bow is made from spruce, and there are signs that it may have been made in the Alutique style, but this isn't certain and modern-day Native American tribal leaders haven't been able to identify it. The fact that nothing like this has ever been found in the area before suggests that it might have found its way to the region through trade rather than being manufactured here. But wooden artifacts like this rot away so quickly that it's just as possible that this is the only one that survived the passing of the centuries. Mona Island in Puerto Rico is uninhabited today, but that hasn't always been the case. We can say that with certainty because of the discovery of a treasure trove of rock art deep inside the island's caves. The discovery was made in 2017, and experts think it has much to tell us about the earliest human civilization ever to exist in the area. Most scientists think that the first humans to reach Mona Island landed there around 5,000 years ago, and eventually merged with the Taino culture in or around the 7th century. What's significant about this site is that the artwork doesn't appear to be the product of a single culture. Instead, it seems to contain art created by different indigenous cultures from all over the Caribbean. There are thousands of individual pieces of art in the cave, some of which are carefully painted, while others are little more than scratches in the rock. While the theory about people landing on Mona Island thousands of years ago has existed for some time, 
This is the first direct physical evidence that people lived here before the arrival of Europeans. Finding enormous sculptures and pieces of rock art is pretty much par for the course for an archaeologist working in Egypt. But there's something special about this ancient Egyptian obelisk fragment, which was found in mid-2017. It's the largest fragment of its kind ever to be found in the country, and experts think that the indentations at the top of the fragment might indicate that it once featured a copper, or perhaps even a gold coating, to help it reflect the sun's rays. The discovery was made at the Saqqara Necropolis, which is a massive burial ground that archaeologists have been digging through for the past several years. It's difficult to give a date for a massive lump of rock, but most experts agree that this piece of obelisk is around 4,300 years old. That would date it to the Old Kingdom era and might mean it was created during the reign of the pharaoh queen Ancnes Pepi II. The red granite block is 8 feet long, but when it was complete, it would probably have been double that size. The smart money says that it was once part of the queen's funerary complex, but why it would have been moved and then broken is an unanswered question. Back to England again now, where we're taking a closer look at the Cuckoo Stone. This stone monument has been standing in a field in Wiltshire since either the Neolithic or Bronze Age, but goes unnoticed by most historians and tourists in the region because of its proximity to more famous ancient stone monuments in Wiltshire, like the Durrington Walls and, of course, Stonehenge. Experts can't rule out the possibility that the Cuckoo Stone was installed by the same people who created Stonehenge, and so it's considered to be part of the Stonehenge landscape. In form and function, it's a sarsen stone which is currently lying on its side, and it has been since it was excavated by archaeologists in 2007. There's a pit immediately to the west of the stone, within which it's likely that the stone was once contained. That means the archaeologists who dug it up in 2007 weren't the first people to do so. The common theory about its original purpose is that it was a small shrine, but there's not enough evidence at the site to conclusively identify it as such. It's not necessarily true to say that the larger a tomb is, the more important the person inside it must be. But that must have been a popularly held belief in Iran at some point in the distant past. The site of Naqsh i Rustam is absolutely enormous, and yet this rock-cut necropolis contains the tombs of only four ancient Persian kings. Naqsh i Rustam is a relic of the Achaemenid Empire, which was at its peak between 2500 and 2300 years ago, before succumbing to the armies of Alexander the Great. The oddest common feature of these tombs is that they are all positioned a long way up the rock face from the base of the hills, and each features what appear to be Christian-style crosses. They can't be Christian crosses because the Christian religion didn't even exist when the tombs were created, and so their symbolic meaning remains unexplained. We know for sure that one of the kings buried here was Darius I. The identities of the remaining three kings have been speculated and debated among historians, but there isn't enough evidence at the site to identify them. Human beings have been interested in stargazing since time immemorial. That's something we can see clearly at Chomshongdai in Gyeongju, South Korea, which is thought to be the oldest observatory in the world. The distinctive structure was built back in the 7th century era of the Sila Kingdom, and there are some who believe the building is full of encoded information. For a start, the Chomshongdai is made from precisely 362 granite blocks. That's one block for each day in a lunar year. The granite blocks create 27 layers, which may be a reference to the fact that Queen Xion Diuk, who was on the throne when Chumshong Dai was built, was the 27th ruler of the Sila Kingdom. Count the number of layers above and below the building's single window and you'll get 12 in each direction, which could be one for every month of the year or one for every sign of the zodiac. The tower is entirely circular except for the base, which is square. That's four sides, one for every season. Numerical symbology clearly mattered to whoever built Chomshongdai, but we don't know if we're reading too much into it. 
Alternatively, perhaps there's more information to decode that nobody's worked out yet. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.